Hi, I'd like to direct your attention for just a moment to what I think is an unmet problem, particularly for startups, those of you who deal with startups and so on. What happens when something goes wrong and somebody doesn't do something right? That was me, but the important bit of the last slide was managing editor in my past. People Google me and they ask me questions like this. This guy's an aggregator. He gets a piece from Hong Kong. It's from some, somebody in the recent student demonstrations, and he goes, ah, what do we do? There's an obvious verification problem. There may be a source protection problem. I get asked this kind of thing, and sometimes if they're high-tech companies, they're surprised that these issues exist at all. They ask me about editorial strategy, guidelines, setting up advisory councils, committees, practice, ethics, and so on. I think there's an unmet need. You could almost call it re-intermediation. You remember disintermediation of years ago? Reach, retrieval, velocity, and the quantity of information does make for new issues. That was what a very distinguished British astronomer said about the global reach of internet information. It has its bad side. And if you are in the journalism business, you really have to care about that. That was something that uh, I think Chris Sutcliffe of Media Briefing put up the other day. And you'd be surprised, if you're in a journalist background, you know this is a problem. If you do not come from a journalist background, trust me, you don't. There's a wider context to this. That's the cover image from The Economist this week. Their editorial, their principal editorial, is about the defense of free speech. And editorial integrity, which is really what I'm talking about, is very, very important. Because if you want to defend free speech, editorial integrity, if you're presenting to do journalism or public interest information or whatever you want to call it, is very, very important. Just a small topical example, the Knight Foundation has just made its largest ever grant, and it was to set up a First Amendment, uh, First Amendment center. The infrastructure of free speech matters as well, not just the people creating the content, but the people who are rooting it, gatekeeping, and so on. That is, of course, among a lot of other people, Google, Apple and Facebook, do black box algorithms have any responsibilities? We need, you need sometimes to know about that. Google is still a bit ambivalent about whether it's media, and Facebook is still in denial about the fact that they're in the media at all. So the question I would like to pose is, what's the best way of helping journalism organizations, and most particularly startups, to frame and make effective their guidelines for good journalism? It is surprising how little really good advice off the shelf there is for this. If the answer to the question was easy to find, I wouldn't be asking it. There are dangers and difficulties in subcontracting, partnerships, we've just been hearing about collaboration, freelancers, reporter safety, sources safety, filters, comments, and forums. That is not an exhaustive list. It's just the kind of things that snag people. So they have to think about editing, and they think they have to about rules, and they have to be helped to think about them as protection and to imagine their worst cases or dilemmas and figure out in detail how to avoid or prevent it. You think this sounds a bit, here, here's a case history. Somebody's arrested, the arrest is reported, he wasn't charged, not convicted, that wasn't reported. The report of the arrest, the contextless fragment, is perpetually available at a click. Here's another one. A victim of domestic violence named 10 years ago at a trial of her attacker. She's begun a new life in a new place. Is she entitled either to have the reference to her de-indexed or obscured in some other way? By now, you'll have got that this is a reference to the right to be forgotten, and I have to disclose that I've just been writing about it. There was a huge fuss about this in 2014. I'm giving you this as an example of the kind of rock under the water that a startup can strike. Sweeping very vague criteria, origins of the problem are buried deep in data protection, but there is a kind of real issue here about fairness and unfairness. And even if you're a tiny startup, you have to worry about this, most particularly if you're subject to EU law. The kind of questions you, people are going to have to ask are, by whom should these cases be weighed? What tests do you use? Should editors act on justified complaints or wait for a legal complaint? Or do we just say, First Amendment, forget it, we don't do any of that kind of stuff? There's a very good Swedish law which outranks uh, data protection. Dutch judges have been absolutely brilliant about this. We should have specific remedies for identifiable harms. Don't be too vague when you write any kind of law. Law isn't even always the best way. My takeaway here, tech-driven startups, journalism explicitly or otherwise, don't always know that these dilemmas exist. Are there better ways of helping them? Thank you for your attention.